fish on, pull and drag. Just a good fish right here. All right, everybody, we got all of our rods in. We're using four rods right now. The two in the middle are just put up there to be out of my way. If we end up doing some suspend, suspending later, I'm gonna use those two rods. Right now we got two straight out the back and two on planer boards, one on each side of the boat. Let's see what happens. All right, so what we did was we started at the boat ramp and I recorded a track all the way out here, 1.2 mile track. And I've just got it set to go back to the beginning of the track. I'm just gonna let the boat do its thing. Um, may have to fight the wind a little bit here and there. We'll see, it's very calm right now. But uh, we're just gonna run this track and see what happens. Like I said, we've got bluegill on this side of the boat. We've got one planter board and one straight out. Got shad on this side of the boat, one planter board and one really long straight back. Fish on, fish on. That only took about five minutes, very small. That was on a bluegill body section with a tiny little channel cat. But it is a skunk out of the boat. Andy got our bait. There we go, tiny little channel on a piece of bluegill body section. So just in case anybody's new, this is your first time at our channel, my name's Chris, we're Hooks and Hammocks. What I'm doing right now is I'm dragging baits for catfish. So you can see I've got I've got six rods back here, but only four I'm using. The two in the middle, they're not in the water. So this rod right here is my long line. It's just straight back. It's on bottom with a dragging sinker. Looks like this right here. So it's my long line straight back. This one, this one right here is my short line straight back. So they can't tangle. So one's longer than the other. They can't tangle. Then on this side of the boat, I've got it on bottom with a dragging weight, but I also have a planer board. That planer board's purpose is to spread my baits apart. So it is right now, as the boat moves forward, the water resistance against that board is pulling it out away from the boat. Same thing on this side of the boat. On bottom with a planer board. So one more thing in case you're new, we launched at the boat ramp up behind the camera and we came all the way out here. I recorded a track using my trolling motor. I just drove the boat and I hit record on my trolling motor. I recorded a track, it's 1.2 miles long. When I got to the end where I wanted to turn around and fish back, I hit go to on my remote, go to beginning. Now the trolling motor is doing everything. It's driving the boat, it's using GPS and it's keeping me on that track I recorded all the way back to the boat ramp until we get to the end. It'll beep at me and I know we're done. If you're interested in learning more about how that recording of track and stuff like that works on the Minn Kota Power Drive or the Tarova or any of the other uh, iPilot trolling motors, they're all pretty much the same. Uh, we have a video about that, but it's on the Catfish Conference YouTube channel. So you can go there and watch that video on how to operate the Minn Kota Power Drive. All right, that's fish number two. Both of them came on bluegill, but this one's a blue cat. Still not very big. We're after the bigger ones than this. Stay tuned, let's see what happens. Fish on, pull and drag. Just a good fish right here.
First one on Chad. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. Good fish, good fish. Gonna let him wear himself out. He just now realized he was hooked. I haven't seen him yet, but it's a good fish. Oh, yeah, that's a good fish. Definitely my PB blue. Got him. New PB right here. I hadn't even weighed it yet, and I know it is. Hooked on one of my screws. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's get the scale. He's a big boy.
Well, this cow keeps bouncing from 92 to 100. I'm gonna call it 90. I can't get it to lock in. Holy cow. Oh my goodness. It's gonna have to be good enough, boys and girls. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh my God! Yeah. And the scale, like I said, the scale goes from 90 to 100, back and forth. Couldn't get to lock in. I'm gonna put him back. Hopefully it's a good picture. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna get him back. Holy shit. Oh. Oh yeah, there he goes. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, why didn't I have somebody with me? Oh my goodness. Holy snooks. That would have been a lot easier with somebody with me. Oh. Woo! -hoo! Oh my gosh. Uh, it just that scale it went straight to 95 and then it go down to 90 up to 100 at one time I saw 102 but it's bouncing all over the place the scale was so I'm just I'm just gonna call it 90 it never went under 90 oh my goodness what a fish that was on a small piece of cut shad small bait Holy cow, I wish I could have got up here and got closer, but he's just too damn heavy. This is a pretty big step. I don't know if I could have made it. Oh. So I, you know, I keep calling that a 90, but I, I, I gotta weigh this net, because it was in the net. Let's see what the net weighs. All right, we're gonna call this net 3.24. We'll call it three and a half. So, We'll say 86 and a half. We're gonna call that fish 86 and a half. All right, guys. Wind's really picking up. I'm, it's hard for me to keep the boat straight. It just keeps trying to blow me in the bank. I'm gonna go ahead and call it quits. Go home, get this video edited so everybody can see this. Man, I'm so, I'm so pumped. 86 and a half pounds, that's what I'm gonna go with. Couldn't get that scale to lock in. I just couldn't hold it up there long enough, but between 90 and 100 pounds is where it stayed the whole time. So we'll go with 90 plus or minus the three and a half pounds for the net. That's 86 and a half. I'm gonna go with that. And for that's just what we're gonna go with. I know that fish weighed more than that, but we're going with 86 and a half. But anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, make sure you give us a like, leave us a comment, hit that subscribe button if you haven't, and we'll see you on the next one.